When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. I'm going to go straight into the dot point. The dot point itself is the experiment you've done to make your own Easter. It says identify data, plan selected equipment, and perform a first investigation to prepare an Easter using reflux. So you have to prepare an Easter using reflux. That was the actual experiment. The equipment that you might have had, or you would have had something quite similar, right? Would have been an either an electrical heater or a Bunsen burner. In many cases, you probably didn't use a Bunsen burner. I'll go over why as well. But you had an electrical heater or a Bunsen burner or if anything else which helps you heat the actual liquids. You would have had boiling chips. You would have had sulfuric acid dropper bottles or any different type of acid that acts as a catalyst. You would have had your, in this case, again, it could have been acetic acid or but butanoic acid. It would have been just your alkanoic acid. You might have had ethanol or one butanol or one propanol or different types of alkanols, which are appropriate when it comes to making esters. You would have had your reflux condenser, which helps you to actually make the ester back into liquid. And you would have had your round bottom flask or something similar to help you actually put all of the things in to help you make the actual ester. And you might have had water and a water bath, and you would have combined them to put your water bath on your electrical heater. So that's your equipment you would have had, and now I'm going to set up the actual experiment or what you might have done, something similar that you might have done in class. Alright, so you had, these are the things you had. Okay, let's have a look. We did, it might, I'll just say we used the electrical heater. So you might have also grabbed the water bath, which was meant to be this here. Then you would have filled that up. You would have put your round bottom flask in it. You would put some water around it as well. Just to absorb some of that heat. What, again, and one of the reasons why you might not have used a flame is because this experiment is actually relatively uh, dangerous. These esters and the uh, the uh, alkanols are flammable, which means they might explode. So if you use a naked flame, which you might in the Bunsen burner, that could increase the risk of it actually exploding. So therefore, thereby you might actually use the electrical heater instead. These are your boiling chips. They are also a safety precaution. So you put your boiling chips inside. What they do is they in decrease the risk, so they lower the risk of there being a relatively big, all of a sudden burst of easters, which could cause a explosion if it comes in contact with flame. So these boiling chips just calm things down a bit, right? So that's why we put them in there. So now we have all of that in there. What we do next is we grab, so this was our catalyst. And this was our catalyst, so we would grab some, put some of our catalyst inside. It'll help speed up the reaction. So I've put some catalyst inside. Again, this might be sulfuric acid. Then I grab, we grab our, what was that? That was our alkanolic acid. Yeah, that was our alkanoic acid. So we grab some of our alkanoic acid, which might be acetic acid or butanoic acid. Put some of that in there as well. And then what we do last, these will all be dropper bottles. What we would do last is we grab some of our alkanol, which might be one butanol, one propanol, or ethanol. We put some of that in there as well. So now we have all of it in there. What we want to make sure is that we always have our condenser on. We want to make sure our condenser is on as well. We would have checked that beforehand to make sure it's actually working properly. And this condenser makes sure that any rises in in I'm going to put that, all that somewhere else. Make some room. But you would, put that, you would check the condenser beforehand to make sure it actually works properly. You don't want to find out that it doesn't work properly during the experiment. Because that means you're wasting your time. So you've checked that it works properly, that the water goes in and out where it's meant to go. When it comes to condenser. So now we put the condenser on. And... You might have found that there is an opening in the condenser as well. That means you can just have, basically you have gases, things escaping, and there's no buildup of pressure, because otherwise there might be too much pressure and that could increase the chance of an explosion. So we tend to have a bit of an opening just for certain vapors to leave. But now that we have our heat source, we have our electrical heater, we have our heat source. 
we have our acidic catalyst. We have our acidic catalyst in there. And we have all of the alkanols and alkanoic acids that we're meant to have. All of that in there, plus our boiling point, our boiling stones, boiling chips. What that means is now the reaction will actually happen. So you're, what you're going to see is you're going to see your green and red dots, which are your alkanols and alkanoic acids. They will start to react and they will form a ester, which I'll represent by this line here. This is our ester line. The ester will move up. Now this is in the gaseous form. Because there is water flowing through these pipes, there's water flowing through these pipes. What that means, it's basically cooling it, right? So it's condensing it. It's like, that's why it's condensed. So it's condensing it. That's why we call it the condenser. And that's what we consider reflux. Just when we have our vapor going back into its original liquid form. So we have condensation happening here. And then this will drop back because it's liquid. It doesn't rise anymore. It's going to drop back into solution. And over time, we're going to have more and more ester being formed in our original solution. Now, you might have used something similar to this setup, or you might have used a more elaborate setup where we can actually collect our ester somewhere else. So we might have like a separate beaker here, and you know, then you have your ester flowing into that beaker. There's obviously an advantage when it comes to that. If you have our ester flowing directly into our liquid ester flowing directly into a separate beaker, that means there's going to be more or less only or the vast majority of it is going to be Easter in that collection. Whereas here we have gonna have a bit of Easter. We're gonna have a good gonna have bit of have gonna have a bit of our unreacted alkanols and alkanoic acids and a bit of water in there as well. It's more of a mixture, as this is more pure than the other one. But in both cases we're gonna have our Easter formed. And that's the idea, right? So prepare an Easter using reflux. Now we've created our Easter. And if we wanted to if we have this mixture here, I'm just gonna draw it again. If we have this mixture here, which has, let's say it has some of our Easter, which I'll draw in purple, some of our Easter, which has formed, now it's liquid. We'll have still some of our alkanols, which I'll draw in green. We'll still have some of our alkanoic acid, which hasn't reacted yet. And it will have a bit of water as well. But if I wanted to separate, if I wanted to get only Easter, only Easter, what could I do? Well, think about the boiling points. What's the boiling point of an Easter compared to of your alkanoic acid and your alkanol? Easters have a lower bo or higher bo boiling points. Well, Easters have a lower boiling point than the other two, which means if we use fractional distillation or distillation in general, so distillation means we can actually theoretically, if we wanted to, we could boil just at a temperature where just our actual esters will become vapor, collect that and not collect the other two. And so if we're using distillation, we could theoretically end up getting only our ester. You might have done that, you probably haven't done it because it'll take a bit more extra time, but that's something we could theoretically do if we wanted to get our ester to be in its pure form. But I go over the top one again, identify dollar plan and select then have a data plan, plan and select equipment and perform first investigation to prepare an Easter using reflux. This was the equipment you used, something similar. Again, remember the equipment you use, because it's actually a relatively big chance that you might get a question either in your HC exam or in your trials or anywhere else that asks you to actually set up, like theoretically, what equipment did you use to set up the experiment. So note down what, what you used in your, in your experiment and know why as well. I know that it's a very risky procedure, right? This has a relatively high risk because the Easter's are explosive and that's why I use the boiling chips and that's why we don't use a naked flame in many cases, just to decrease the risk of it exploding more or less. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.